Hey YouTube, this is the second video in our boat build series. Um, and today we're gonna be installing the Gatorback lit bunks that we built in our last video. With that, let's get to it. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Today is the second video in our boat build series. In that last video, we built these boat bunks. They're, they got Gatorback covers on them and they are lit with uh, plush light LEDs, mm -hmm. mainly to give us a runway for landing the boat uh, when we're trying to trailer it at night, which I do a lot of night catfishing in the summer. So um, these will be very handy. Now we need to have a preemptive conversation about this boat trailer uh, before we get into today's build, uh, just to cover what needs to be done and the things we're gonna have to do as a result of installing these, which is gonna create quite a bit of work for us. The first thing I see is how far this boat is back on the trailer. Um, ideally, you would see this transom would be lined up with this back brace here. So you're getting the transom over the back brace of the trailer so that way when you have the motor on the trailer all of the weight of the motor moving and shifting when you're moving down the road is as close as it can be to over the top of that back support on the trailer number one we're going to move the boat forward on the trailer at the same time we're going to install new lit trailer bunks so if we think about it with the motor on the back the tongue of the trailer should have seven to ten percent of the total trailer weight i don't have the ability to weigh the entirety of this boat I don't have a scale for that, um, but I'm gonna show you guys today a way to account for the trailer distribution weight. So when we move the boat forward, it's gonna move more weight onto the tongue. So we're gonna go out of you know, our seven to 10% tongue weight ratio that it should be, and we need to set that back. And the way we're gonna do that is by moving our axle forward. And we have to be able to calculate, right? We need to calculate when we move it forward, how much weight did we displace and how much forward are we gonna have to move this axle to make it right. In order to install these bunks, because we have roller bunks on right now, we're gonna need to remove these bunks and we're gonna need to build risers and we'll use these brackets in the back uh, to get it started. We're gonna use this tube still here to build a riser that bolts between those two brackets and connects with, with bunk brackets to the bottom of our new bunks. Then what we're gonna do is up here, we're gonna replicate those brackets. So we're gonna build new metal brackets out of two inch square tubing here, just like they do on the, uh, like we have in the back, we'll drill holes. Then we'll build the same riser style that we have in the back up front here. And what's gonna be cool, so again, stick, stay tuned, is I'm gonna show you guys two ways of finding your measurement from here over to where you need to put your brackets. First things first, however, we talked about trailer weight. Before we can do anything, we need to get a weight off of the trailer tongue as it is now but we don't have a motor on the back. We need to put a motor on the back so we have more a, a more accurate weight so that we know how to, far to move our axle. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use a hand scale that I use for like weighing game for hunting, like deer and fish and stuff. Pretty heavy duty one, I'll, I'll link it in the description. They're not that expensive. I think like 30 bucks or something like that. And we're just gonna hand lift the front and get a weight to see how much weight is on the tongue currently with the motor installed. And I think that's the key there is that it has to be with the motor installed. First things first, we have to remount our motor, which kind of sucks. I replaced that transom recently. This is a brand new transom. So I have not mounted a motor on here yet. We have to drill these holes out, put our mounting bracket on, hook up our motor to the hoist here, drop it on, run our bolts through. We're not gonna watertight seal it or anything because we're gonna take the motor right back off. As soon as we get the motor on, we're gonna take a tongue weight. We'll pull the motor back off and we'll, we'll jot that tongue weight down somewhere so that we can refer back to it later. Eventually, when we get to doing our axle project and rebuilding our, our, our hubs and axle and all that jazz, we'll end up putting that motor back on. We'll take another weight off of the get check weight on the tongue again and see how much weight was transferred to the tongue. Let's say, for example, we transfer 100 pounds to the tongue. I, I doubt it'll be that dramatic, but just for ease of numbers. We transfer 100 pounds to the tongue. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the axle forward six inches and get another tongue weight. And we're gonna continue to move the axle forward until the tongue weight is the same as where we started. So with that, I'm gonna throw you guys on the time lapse. I don't see any need to show you mounting the motor. You're gonna get a whole bunch of that at the end of the series when we finish the boat. So I'll put you on the time lapse, we'll get the motor mounted, and then I will come back to you when we go to take a, a tongue weight.
All right, guys, I don't know if you noticed when we were putting that boat motor back on, but I may have cracked my transom bracket. Uh, I guess we're going to see when we when we pull that motor back off. But there was a definite split on the bottom, uh, whether that's factory or not. I doubt it. Um, if that's the case, the transom bracket snapped and that's going to be a huge problem. Obviously, finding a factory replacement could be impossible. Finding a replacement is possible, but I need one that fits the trim system I just bought, which is specifically for that transom bracket. So we'll see when we pull the motor off here in a minute if we broke it. If we did, uh, yeah, that's not good. Obviously, I have to fix that or find a replacement. Um, I'm pretty sure I could weld it. Just it sucks. Moving on to the next step. We got weight on the back of the boat. We, we need to get a target weight. What is it now before we move it? And then we can know where to get it back to once we do move it. And to do that, I'm using this Asani 660 pound scale. I bought this on Amazon. I will link it in the description. I think again, they're pretty cheap, like 20, 30 bucks, something like that. So just gonna get it zero. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hook this hook on the front of the tongue. I'm gonna lift. I'm gonna take note of the weight. We're actually gonna weigh it twice to make sure. Okay, so that was 55.6 pounds of tongue weight so far, which is nothing. <laughs> We're gonna do it again. <laughs> That was about 54. So we're gonna go 54 to 55 pounds. And again, we're gonna note that somewhere so that we can uh, refer back to it later. For now, that's all we needed. We went through this whole mess just to get that one number. In fact, since we did do this whole mess and may have broken the motor, let's weigh it one more time just to be extra sure. Yeah, 54 pounds. Now, we gotta tear the motor back off and see if we broke that bracket. Fingers crossed, you guys, we didn't break that bracket. All right, guys, so it did crack, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, and I think it actually was cracked before, and I just didn't notice it. So if I can point it out, there's a crack right there that runs up here. It connects both sides together, so that could be a problem. Um, it can certainly be welded. I can see that. So that's not terrible. I mean, we can fix this. So while it sucks, it's not the end of the world um, and it can be fixed. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this motor off of the lift and back on its mount. And then I'll get back to you guys. All right, guys, let's bring you up to speed to where we left off yesterday. I'm gonna fly this boat here today. I'm gonna get it up in the air, which is gonna be sketchy at best. With that, I'll show you guys kind of what we're looking at down here now that the Roll, front roller bunks are removed. Um, and again, where we're kind of mounting to. Uh, the other thing is, is that we're gonna have some angles to deal with on our rear bunks. Um, and I'll, I'm gonna show you that here right now. So as you guys can see here, these brackets that we're gonna be using that are existing come up at a, an angle. And we're gonna try to wanna match that angle on the front brackets that we install up there. And just to show you the front, this is what we've done so far, is just bring this down to bare metal and remove those old brackets. I'm gonna find this angle here, so we know what angle to cut into the bottom of our brackets. What we're gonna do is come and put the left side of our tool here. I'll put the, I got this from Harbor Freight, I'll put a link in the description. And we're gonna find that right angle on this side and line it up. And then we're gonna take and move our bottom of the protractor and catch this bottom angle here. And that's gonna give us this angle in between the two flat surfaces. So that is a 100 degree obtuse angle. Obviously that's how you know which side to read is if we were under 90, it would be 80. If we we're over 90, which we currently are, it'd be 100. All right, so there's a couple measurements we wanna take here. Number one, we wanna get the height off of the, uh, the frame here. The bracket height is four inches. So we're gonna use two inch piece of tubing, cut the back side up off of it, cut our angle into the bottom, round over our edges on the top just to make it nice and pretty looking. Um, we'll drill our three holes in the center and we'll do that times two, right? One for each side and then times two again for the, the right sides. And then what we need to figure out here or what we should take is a measurement up to the bottom of our boat. So we can then measure our riser height because once the boat comes off of here, we're not gonna have this to be able to measure anymore. To the bottom of the boat, which is exactly, I mean exactly, 
nine inches. We'll measure the bunks. We'll subtract that from that total nine inches, right? So if the bunks are three and three quarter inches, we'll subtract three and three quarter from the nine inches. That'll give us our total riser height. So the, the piece of square inch tubing that we're gonna cut out of this bar here um, and drill our holes through. It'll tell us the height to, for that guy. I, I talked to you guys about how I would show you those. There's two methods to figure out how far right um, so we can line them up perfectly in the front. So option number one is you could take something straight and you know it's straight. This is just a piece of flat bar that I have sitting there scrapped and we could clamp it to the bottom of our straight pole here. So we just have it clamped in place and that gives us that straight edge off of the same measurement of the back. Now we'd have to measure from the outside of the pool. So uh, let me bring you over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a measurement from, I'm gonna go to the outside of the bracket to the outside of the tubing there, which is, it's like eight and three sixteenths. My tape measure really sucks. So now what we can do is we can measure from that flat piece. We'll measure <clears throat> from here, eight and three sixteenths inches out, and then put a mark on our bar where that line's on the inside. And that should tell us the outside edge. And right away, I can already tell there's gonna be a problem here if that measurement's correct because there's a uh, bracket here that's in the way. So I'll show you the other way to do this. What I have here is I have this square laser device where if you turn it on, basically kicks a laser out this and this direction, giving you a perfect 90 degree angle. So the theory here is that if we mount this thing up here on our angle, it should shoot that laser into our front bar and tell us exactly what straight across would be. We need to line up. Now we need to clamp this guy down. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see that. We have this clamped on this 90 degree of this, shooting a laser directly across that front edge, perfectly with that front edge. So it's gonna throw a line and you can see it right there all the way down. I don't know if you do, if you can see that, but there's a laser that goes all the way up here. So we're gonna mark this, cause, but this is gonna be a big problem. All right, so this is where we're at. Um, and I've said it before on this channel that I don't hide problems from you guys. It's just part of fabrication. In this case, I only see one option. Move our assembly right enough to, to clear it. And what that means is that we're gonna have to cut these back brackets off and then re-weld them or remake. I guess it depends on the quality of them. I don't know if we wanna go through that much work. Um, if they're all beat up and disgusting, then when I get them off, then I might, um, it depends on how well it goes cutting them off. Uh, with that, I think the next step is that we're gonna get this boat in the air uh, which is gonna be, again, a sketchy ordeal. Hopefully it works out all right. Come back, I'm gonna get set up for this, uh, and then I'll show you how I'm doing it before we, we raise it. All right guys, so this is what we got going on here. So let me pan up a little bit. And on the back of my electric winch, I have a two by six, uh, and they are connecting to an eye bolt here, an eye bolt there, and the chain in the center. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't just hook it to an eye bolt in the center, it's because it's gonna put all the weight right in the center of the board and it's gonna pull up and bend, right? Beyond the fact, it's also gonna give it a really good pivot point so the boat can then swabble back and forth. So by putting it in the middle with a chain as a pivot point, it's gonna hopefully keep it a little more level. And then on each side here, I got another eye bolt with a toe strap. So a heavy duty toe strap that goes underneath of the boat down here and out to the sides. Now these points are outside of the beam of the boat. And the reason for that is let's say that strap came in here closer. It would create a pinch point here and it could squeeze the boat and misshape the hole, which would not, of course, would not be good. On the front here, I don't have an electric winch. I just have your standard chain winch that you get from Harbor Freight. So this looks what it looks like from the side and how those straps run under the boat. And as you can see, I have a 20 foot strap in the, or in the front and the back, but because there's a lot smaller distance to cover here, this one's too long. I'm gonna run out of room up top. So before we lift this thing, I know we've been all waiting patiently. Trust me, it's driving me nuts. I'm gonna have to run back to Harbor Freight and grab a shorter strap here. I don't know, 10 to 16 foot, I guess. Probably a 10 footer would work. Uh, we'll come back, I'll run that strap, and then we'll finally lift this thing. Okay guys, so we got another a new strap for the front here. So you can see I got plenty of chain height. Um, not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous. I don't think there's gonna be an issue, but we're just gonna take it really, really slow and steady here and just raise it up, maybe a half inch at a time and reassess. All right guys, we're gonna lift this slow, steady. These chains can get 
are super oily. All right, so we're gonna raise the back first, just slow. Okay, so right now we're not off of the bunks yet. It works. Back bunks are pretty much free. The boat has shifted this way a bit. I'm trying to straighten it out. Let me get this front up. And we are off of our front keel roller. And we're barely touching our bow. I'm just a little bit more here. Yeah, so the boat is officially in the air, which is pretty exciting. Um, it's not moving too much. So we are free to do start working but it seems pretty light and stable. Not hear any bad noises. I think we're good to go. All right, so with that, I'm gonna put you guys on the time lapse. I'll switch to my GoPro as well, um, and we'll start pulling these back bunks off so we can start repurposing that steel. Just to get a quick check in of where we're at. So we've got, got the back brackets cut off so that we can move them to match our fronts. I got the everything, all the welds cleaned up and ready to go. I'm going to next clean up the brackets, just get those back to 90 degrees, ground straight, all the old weld stuff ground off of them. I think those brackets are perfectly fine to use again, so we are gonna use them again. What we need to also do is we're gonna build the brackets for the front out of the two by two steel that we pulled off the back. We're gonna cut four lengths of brackets. We'll cut the backs out of them so that they're, they're open on the back and then we'll drill our holes for these front ones. Uh, we'll also cut our risers that goes up to the bottom of the bunk so that way when we tack weld these into place, we're gonna have them bolted, the brackets bolted together with the riser so that when we tack weld it into place, the spacing is perfect. And then once we have our brackets in place, we'll use our laser level again and shoot a laser towards the back to get our placement on where the, uh, the rear brackets are gonna go. Again, we'll bolt those together with the risers. We'll put them in place. We'll tack weld them, pull the riser out, and finish weld it. It's a lot. We got a lot of work to do, so I'm gonna put you back on the time lapse for that. All right, guys. So here, we're gonna lay our 90 degree edge on the 90 degree edge here. And then we're gonna bring this up enough to where the end hits the corner of our tube steel. And we can make our line. Now that is gonna be the angle that we're gonna cut for our front bracket. So we'll go ahead and cut this first one and get the saw set here. And then remember, we're going to the outside of that line. That's where we want to end up our saw blade. So the beginning of our saw blade would be at the edge of that line. And don't forget eye protection. There's our cut and there's our angle. So now our bracket, original bracket. These guys are, see that, four inches tall. So we're gonna make our new brackets four inches tall from the longest point. We're gonna set this back to zero. And this time I measured to that line, so we're gonna bring our line all the way to the outside edge. 
So now, this in theory, right, would be our bracket. We're gonna cut these the back out of this to open it up. We'll drill holes through here. And then for the second one, so instead of cutting this side out, we'll just cut this side out. But otherwise it'll be the same cut. Now, before we finalize this, I want to test the theory, right? Before we replicate this all four times plus the risers, you know, it's, it's gonna be a lot of work. So we don't want to put in all that work and then find out it's gonna be bad, have to redo it. Plus we're gonna be probably short on steel. So I'm gonna set this up, just clamping stuff down, temporary, put on the laser level and just kind of confirm that they line up. If it lines up close-ish enough, then we'll be good. And we can then just replicate this um, and through movie magic make the other four brackets. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the GoPro on so you guys can see what's going on here. So that laser shooting a straight line across and that's, I lined that bracket up back up to that gusset as far as I could. So I know that's as far left as I can go. And so what I'm gonna do here is line this up with that front edge. Just clamp her down. It's lined up there and then we'll go set our front one in place, which will cover that laser because of the angle. So that's why I had to take, the, take it out of there. But if you can see now, right, it's gonna cover the laser. We can't see it anymore. So really what we're just looking at is to make sure that it lines up visually. This front edge here should line up with the front edge of that one. And that's pretty much exact. So now that we have our angles right, we can go ahead and cut the rest of our tube steel and finish our brackets. So now what we're gonna do is we're just clamping this in here and let's make sure we're doing this the right direction, right? So this is gonna go this way on the trailer, right? So we're, our riser's going in the inside of this. So we wanna make sure we cut out the backside and just to make sure we don't screw that up, I'm gonna put a mark on there. And I did it wrong. <laughs> so the angle is this way. We need to cut out this side. Well, there it goes, guys. Gotta go get some blades, cutting wheels. <clears throat> All right, we're back in the store with a fresh set of cut off wheels here. All right, so we finished our cutting the back out. So now we have it roughed. We're going to take it over to the grinder and just clean up these edges. Um, and then we will mark out our holes the best we can uh, to match the spacing on the original brackets. Um, and then we will take and round off our back corners just to clean it up and make it look nice, right? <laughs> All right, guys, had some technical difficulties with the other camera there. So got that going on right now. Uh, I'm gonna, it's dumping some data and then I can go back to recording with it. So for now, we're just gonna use the GoPro. I've got my holes marked out here. Hopefully you can see that in the camera. One, two, three, um, center hole punched. And we will be using a half inch drill bit all right guys, so we have our first completed bracket. That top hole is terrible. We'll obviously fix that um, on the next few. And so with movie magic, we're gonna go ahead and make, we got four total, so we need three more left to make here and then to clean up our other two back brackets. And with that, all right, now we have four back brackets and we've got four front brackets. So now that we've got our brackets made, what we need to do is make our uprights and we're just going to drill these bottom holes first, get them bolted together. So that way we've got, we've got our spacing correct when we go to tack weld these to the frame. All right guys, so there's the first pillar done. Mark your holes on each side separately and then drill them all separately. So like this, we're gonna pinch these together and I'm gonna mark my holes. This side, and then keeping it together in the same spot, mark my holes on this side separately. Now this isn't gonna matter on the back uh, brackets because they're straight up 90, so we can drill those straight through, no big deal. But for these front ones, make sure that you're, again, you're marking them and drilling them separately. All right, here's what we got so far. All I've done, cleaned up all the mill scale on this. Now a quick 
pro tip, right? If you guys are thinking ahead, you could soak this stuff in vinegar, which is what I normally do. I just didn't do it, and I didn't want to wait anymore to get the trailer off of the hangy system. Before we weld with these though, we're going to wipe them with acetone, but before we do that, we're gonna go over to the trailer and get it ready for welding. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna take again the flap disc and we're gonna clean all of this off so we got nice bare steel. Uh, the thing to remember is that you need to clean this front edge as well. And again, while we're here, might as well hit it all, um, but we will be welding to this edge and this back edge. So you wanna make sure it's all clean and then again, we'll wipe it down with, uh, with acetone before we actually weld, try to get as clean as possible. All right guys, so it's time to throw some tack welds down. We're gonna do this side first. We're gonna take a measurement from here out so we can make sure the other side's the exact same, as close as possible. Um, but again, just tack welding our brackets and the, ta uh, the risers just in place to keep everything spaced properly. So when we take it all apart, it's, it, we put it back together and it's all in the right spot, so. We'll get some on the back side too. All right, now we'll repeat on the other side. We're gonna go ahead and remove these pillars and then we'll set our location for the back, so. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these bolts out. We need the pillars to be in the same spot. So the best place to do this off of would be off of here or off of here. So now I just need to get creative about how I'm gonna accomplish clamping it on there, which I think I could do with the clamp. All right, I think that's as good as I get it. All right, so now we're to the back of the uh, trailer here. We have our rear assembled uh, riser and brackets. And what we're looking for here is again, this is off of the front edge of the bracket up front. So we're gonna line that laser line up that I have right here with the front edge of this bracket. If you remember the top edge, it's gonna be a little further up. And if we wanna check that, we can use our trick yesterday off the front where we clamp a piece of steel and take a measurement from the back, then take a measurement from the front. I'm actually, I'm gonna go do that as a double check. All right, everyone, so we have a new problem, but before we even get to that, if we turn our laser on here, and first of all, we all have to agree that we don't care about the, where the brackets line up in the beginning or the back side, right? Like that doesn't matter. Um, and really there's, these aren't the same measurement on the front and the back, the, the brackets aren't the same. Um, what we care about is the placement of our riser. And we wanna know that both the front and the back line up with the one on the back, right? It's, either, it's really either this edge or this edge that, that matters, that we care about. Um, so if we try to line this up off of this edge, the fact that it has a bracket that angles this way cuts off the laser so it, we don't see it on the other side. So that's not an option. If we do it from this side, it doesn't. So that's definitely an option. The problem is, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see on camera, the problem is, is there's no way for me to clamp this. What we can do, and what I did, is we can clamp a piece of flat bar to the straight portion of the frame, right? And that gives us that, it extends that angle straight out. So that again, we can take a measurement from here to the inside of that pillar. And when I measure it, it's exactly 11 and a quarter to the bottom of this inside pillar, right? 11 and a quarter from here. So now, if I go to the back of the boat, and I measure off of this edge in 11 and a quarter, that would tell me where the inside of that bracket would be. So 11 and a quarter. And again, what we're looking for here is this inside edge to line up with our 11 and a quarter mark, which is just about there. Again, since I don't have an extra set of hands here, you can use a clamp to just 
very lightly clamp it in place. It's not gonna, it's not an easy task. So there it is, right? Somewhat in the spot that it's gonna be. And now that we have it in place, we can actually use our level, laser level to just double check it with. Since we're up here, right? We can turn this on, go down here. We're getting our, the front edge of this laser lined up with the front edge of this bracket. We want it to be flat. We can kind of hold it there. So this should line up with the inside of that back bracket at the bottom. Obviously it's not gonna at the top because the angles are different, right? This is flat, that's angled. But at the bottom where the tube steel comes in contact with the bracket, they line up exactly. Like, look at that. that, that I don't think you can get any better than that. So once we have it set, we can put the laser away, right? Um, and we can do everything else with measurements because now we have a point of reference. And that point of reference is the distance between here and the beginning of this bracket. So if we measure to this, seven and a quarter inches. So we can put a mark, pull this off, put a mark at seven and a quarter. We can do the same on this side and line up the back of that bracket with it and we're gonna be perfect. So we don't need to mess with the laser on the right side because again, we have a measurement we can work off. We just want it the same on both sides. So now we come to our problem. Set this in place and line it up with our mark where it's supposed to go, right? We want a nice even surface here. We want like our, our mating surfaces to be as close as possible with, with as little gapping as possible so that we get a nice good weld. On the back here, you can see it lines up perfectly. On the front, I have about a quarter inch gap under here. I can literally stick the whole tip of my finger under there. And we're not gonna try to weld that gap and expect this thing to be load bearing, right? So the first thought is what's the issue? If I bring it up here or I even put it on my flat welding table, no more gap, right? So I know because we flatten this on the grinder, I know this thing is flat. That's not the problem. The problem is, is that I've got a big bubble here. Um, and I think what it's from is from those previous brackets over the years ripping and pulling on this thing and eventually, or maybe they hit it on something and it pulled out, but it's got a big bubble on both sides actually. Um, I knew this was gonna be a problem. I, I knew it was here to be honest with you the whole time. I just didn't think, or I, did, I wasn't sure if it, if it was gonna be an issue for us. Um, you know, if it, if it wasn't, I wasn't gonna really mess with it. It's hard, you can't really see it. That's not making a big difference. Um, but if it gave us issues, we're gonna have to address it, right? And so we're definitely gonna have to address it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a sheet metal technique to fix this. Um, and this is, I think they call this a planishing hammer or a sheet metal hammer. Uh, the, the main takeaway here is that it's got a flat face. In fact, if you don't have somewhere to go buy one of these or you don't have, you can take a hammer and technically if you got a good grinder, just grind it flat. But this just gives us a flat surface to hit against, right? And this is a dolly and I have several different versions of these. All of these are uh, high carbon steel. I think that's important. Whatever hammer you need, it needs to be a high carbon steel so that it's harder than the material you're hitting or you're not gonna make much of a difference. So the way these work in sheet metal is when you smash these together, you can use it to straighten your steel. Technically, the way you would do this, if it was again, a sheet metal, is you would use an oxyacetylene torch here because it gives you the most heat in a single spot. So you'd come up and you'd hit this right in the center with an oxyacetylene. You'd get a, a nice orange uh, glow or burn to it. You would hit it once right in the middle and it would pop it down. And then you would, you would go up here with your dolly and you would hit around the outside of it like this, just continuously. And you would see that it would pull that dent out of it. And what you're doing is you're actually stretching the steel. So we're gonna use a, a technique that's similar to that. Now our bulge is huge, right? This, is, this thing's this big. So this is gonna take a couple of tries at this. Um, I don't actually have a working oxyacetylene right now. I'm gonna use some map gas, which isn't the best option uh, because it's not so centralized, right? Uh, and it's probably never gonna get the steel red hot. Uh, but that's fine. We're, it's not sheet metal like on a car where we have to paint over this surface and have this like super smooth, you know, showroom quality finish. The main thing is that we need this plane here to be flat. Uh, so even if it's just dented a little bit, it doesn't even matter. With that, let's get to it. I don't know if you can see on camera how well that worked, but we still have some left to do. And we're gonna hit it with a, with a wet rag, cools it just slightly and gets it to contract. Now I can see there's more lift over here. And if I put this on here, you're gonna see it's still, still a bit of a gap. 
but we're getting better. So I'm gonna heat this side now. I don't know if you can see, but they're still bulging down in here, so we're gonna move our heat this way. One more heat. Now if we saw in that last heat, I kind of hit around the outside edges, and what that's doing is it's pulling the steel back out, um, trying to stretch it. So you could really see it in person. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but in person you could really see it smooth itself out. So we'll check this one more time. It sits perfect now. There's no gap. So we'll hit this with the grinder wheel just to get rid of some of our hammer marks. So when I ground it, I could see there's still a little bit there, but it's not enough to affect us, right? So I'm not gonna make it an issue. Uh, for our purposes, the problem is solved. So now we can get this fit up and tack welded along with the other side. These are bunk brackets. Uh, these will basically attach to here, and then these will attach to the bottoms of the actual box. We got some choices here, right? If we mount these above, and we'll put it on the side. If we mounted this e dead even with the top, when this thing pivots, notice we expose an edge here, we expose an edge here. We could raise it just a bit, and then we would avoid that problem. But we're not, we're gonna make things harder on ourselves, of course. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark these spots out after we drill this and after we drill it and then take that stuff off with the grinder. So for now, what we need to do is find center here. We're gonna use that, do some, uh, use some blue daikin for that. And we'll use our calipers to find the width. It's exactly two inches. So we're gonna drop it back down to an inch. That would be center, lock it into place. That to an inch. And then we're gonna use the edge to just score a center line. Now we know where center of the pipe is. We can line our hole up. So this would be center. Looks pretty good right there. We'll mark our hole, get it a good center punch. And then we'll take it over to the drill press and we'll drill it. All right, we got our holes drilled here. We got some extra holes from uh, where the, the holes that were drilled in it before. We got some three inch, half inch galvanized bolts here. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on it, but we're not gonna bolt it down. We're just gonna hold it there. And then we're gonna turn what will be exposed when we angle this bracket. And then we'll do the same on this other side. And it's basically gonna give us our radius that we need to grind in off to the top of here. Like so. So we're gonna take this over to the grinder and we're gonna grind all that steel off right there. All right, so we have our bunk brackets hand tightened and bolted into place on both sides. Um, everything's tacked, tack welded down. So we're ready to move on to the next step. What we're gonna do is we just need to fit up one side to make sure that everything is lining up as we expect it to, right? We don't wanna do all our welds and then come back to find out it's not gonna fit in the right spot on the boat or it's gonna hit one of our ribs wrong, right? Whatever. Um, and we also need to know what our front riser height's gonna be. So we're gonna mount this one to our bunk because uh, we I, we know where it's gonna mount and I'll show you that in a second. And then we're gonna come over here and fit this up. We'll move this back under the boat. <laughs> we'll fit up the bunk into place and then we'll take a measurement. After that, we'll cut our front two risers, get our bunk brackets on those, and then I'll check back in with you. Um, with that, I'll take you over to the bunk that we built in last week's video. If you haven't watched that video yet, make sure you go back and check it out. I will link it in the description as well. All right, so here's the bunk that we built in last week's video. And again, this is um, a gator back cover over a cedar rough sawn piece of wood, which um, just means that it went through the first stages of milling and not 
through all the smoothing phases. So it's a little bit rougher, uh, but it also retains some more of those waterproof values. Underneath, we have a channel cut into the, the wood uh, with an LED strip so that when we launch this boat or we try to land this boat at night, uh, we have a runway, a lit runway to bring our boat onto, which is really helpful, especially for, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over. And we do know, so we, we know uh, some measurements here uh, that we can work with. Um, and the reason we can go ahead and mount our, bu our bunk in place as it is. Uh, number one, there's an inch offset on the back for this cap. And you wouldn't want this to be load bearing. The boat should not sit on that cap. So you need it to sit back from the bracket at least that one inch. I'd like to go a little bit more. I'm gonna leave two inches uh, sitting out at the back. So then you have just some extra, you'll have that much hanging off the back, uh, just to give you some room, if you will. But the boat will will stay up here, right? It's gonna still be even with the back of the boat. We're not gonna park the, park the back of the boat on there. It's just gonna hang off the back as extra leverage. So we're gonna mark this out two inches. So that's the line we're gonna use to line up our bracket here. Centering it on the bunk. We'll mark out our six holes. Go ahead and center punch each of them. I know it's wood, but I still, since we're dealing with a bracket, we want everything to line up. So I like to center punch everything. Grab a drill. <clears throat> and we are using 3 8 inch, one and a half inch um, galvanized lag screws. And the reason they're obviously one and a half inches is because we don't want to go through the top of the bunk and the bunk is two inches thick. So that's so a pretty thick bolt. So I am going to drill a pilot hole, just a small one on these. All right, so we just got it set in place. Obviously it's not level with the hole here. Okay, so on the back, I'm just gonna take a couple of measurements. You can see it's just barely, just barely sitting on that bracket. And really what I wanna know is it left to right straight, meaning um, it's a, an even equidistance from here to here on both sides of the hole. And we appear to be good in center, so this is, Go we'll up to this bracket for a point of reference. It's like nine inches on the dot. And this side's eight inches. So it makes me wonder if we are center. That's 33 is our center mark right here. So we are a little right. I'm gonna move it right just a hair if I can. That's better. Crank on this strap a little bit. So now my measurement is nine inches over here, nine inches on the dot over here. So we are, e our center line is center line on this trailer and we are equidistant apart on both sides. So we got our placement right. Now we can go up front and check our, take our measurement for the riser. So it is nine inches on the dot. Sorry if my head was in the way that whole time. That was not easy to do. It is nine inches on the dot, just like our back. So there is no half inch difference. So we can go ahead and cut our front risers now, shape them, drill the bracket holes, and then the next step is just gonna be mounted up. One more thing we gotta do before we uh, pull these bunks off and get to welding uh, is I need to mark my holes here so that we can uh, mount and drill these in. Right now this bunk is just resting on top of that bracket. All right, so we're all prepped for welding.
All right, guys, moment of truth. Uh, everything is nice and securely welded into place, so our brackets are good until we get to paint, of course. All we gotta do is bolt them together and drop the boat on there, and this part of the project will be done. All right, guys, we got the, uh, the bunks officially bolted and secured to the boat. So now you're gonna get to see the boat land on the completed trailer, mostly completed trailer for the first time. The last thing we need to do will be, once we get this boat set down on here, uh, we'll tighten our pivot bolts here. So that way this is set in place for good. Um, and then we'll do the final reveal. So exciting, it's been a lot of work. Glad we got to this point. We'll go ahead and drop this boat down on here now. All right guys, we have capture. Boat's on there really good. Bunks are holding strong. Uh, all the weights out of our straps, our straps are completely free and we are on just the bunks right now. Uh, so they're in the, the bow roller. Um, so next up, what we've been waiting for the whole video for would be to, uh, to reveal this thing. We'll turn the lights on and show you what it looks like. All right, YouTubers, thanks for watching. That's pretty much gonna wrap up this video for today. Uh, make sure you're hitting that like and subscribe button so you get the notifications when the next video drops. Specifically in the next video, we are gonna address the winch. Um, whatever we do as far as the bow ladder goes will have to be separate from the winch. So we can go ahead and get our winch assembly figured out. We're gonna replace um, our winch with a brand new winch. Uh, we'll remove all this stuff that we don't need. We'll get this placed where it needs to go. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we'll, we'll move this back behind our winch tower. We're gonna cut off of our, our bad steel. We'll install our folding tongue kit, put on a new piece of steel, um, and we'll measure that out specifically for our truck. And then we'll put on a new hitch assembly. So uh, again, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. That'll be the very next video. And thanks for watching.